So on this slide we talk about sheaf of regular functions. So we have already mentioned the sheaf of regular functions in previous slide but in this slide we essentially prove the restriction and the gluing conditions of the sheaf. So rather than just mentioning it we will prove the conditions for restriction as well as gluing. So first we set V as a affine algebraic set. So since V is a affine algebraic set it is cut out by some polynomial. Yeah so since it is cut out by some polynomial we can al always talk about the associated ring of regular functions on it. Yeah, so this ring of, ring of regular functions we call as O of V. It could be something like Cx comma Y and you modulo out the polynomial which basically cuts down the A fine algebraic set V. So this we have done multiple times. So this is just an example yeah, of O of V. So start with the A fine algebraic set. Then you take out a polynomial out of O of V. Now we define an open set. This is equal to O of V and then you have 1 by F here. Yeah. So basically the elements of O of U of F contain all the elements of, of O of V and then fractions whose denominator is a power of F. So this we have all covered before. Yeah, in some books instead of U of F, U subscript F, you write D of F. Now if V is irreducible, we talk about O of V as an integral domain and uh, if O of V is an integral domain, we can always form its field of fractions. Yeah, so V is irreducible, you can say O of V is an integral domain. Now if it is an integral domain, you can form its field of fractions. And in that case, this O U of F is nothing but a subring of the field of fractions. So till now we are just recalling what we have already done before. So let us now talk about the restriction map. So say this one set U of F is contained in U of G. Yeah, so let us draw this down so that things are clear. It is easy to recall. So this is your A fine algebraic set say V. You have formed U of G by cutting out four points. Yeah, so you have a polynomial G which cuts out four points and you get U of G. Yeah. So you get u of g here. So out of v you have taken out four points. That is it. So you have u of g a open set which is cut out by the polynomial g. g is an element of o of v. Now we want to talk about u of f. So u of f is a subset of u of g so you have to have the four points missing and some extra points missing too. Yeah otherwise u of f would not be a subset of u of g. So it, it is cut out of by a polynomial f, f lies in o of v. So here I am saying that uh, 6 points are missing out of the a fine algebraic set v. So now you can see that u of f is a subset of u of g. 4 points are exactly the same which were cut out by polynomial g. Yeah, so obviously as you can see the vanishing set of F contains the vanishing set of G. You can see the vanishing set of F has 6 points, vanishing set of G has 4 points and U of is a subset of U of G if the vanishing set of F contains the vanishing set of G. 
So till now everything is clear just by looking at the figures. So F vanishes on vanishing set of G. So by null Stellen starts now F of N is equal to G of H. Basically F is in the radical ideal generated by G since F vanishes on uh, V of G. So F is in the radical ide ideal. So F of N is G of H uh, is G times H. So if U by G I is a function of U of G. We want to show that when you restrict it to U of F you get U over some denominator of F. So you started with the section of O of U of G and you want to end up in O of U of F that is restricted to smaller set U of F. So the restriction should work. Yeah, You should end up with something with a denominator in in terms of F. So we, right now we have denominator in G so we want to end up with the denominator in F. So you multiply denominator and numerator by HI. So U times HI divided by GI times HI. Right. So it should be G superscript I times H superscript I. So we can write denominator as F F and I and the numerator you can keep as U times H I or just uh, write say V instead of U. Yeah, I just kept it U but you could write something else there. But uh, the important part is the denominator. You can see the denominator is now in terms of F. So if you restrict it you get to the denominators. To be exact you should write U times H I as some other function as like say L or M or something like that. Yeah. So basically you were able to go from open set U of G restricted to U of F and you were able to keep the definition intact that is the denominator should be in terms of the function which is defined from the set U of G or U of F. Now we talk about the gluing condition. So we need to able to find a uh, so say set U F is covered by a bunch of uh, other sets and then you can see the vanishing set of F is nothing but vanishing set of F1 intersection vanishing set of F2. So this we have all seen before. Yeah, so now I draw the figures it will be more clear. Say U of F is at from V you take out two finite points cut out by some polynomial. So these two points which are cut out now out of V you have taken these two points F you get so out of V you have taken these two points out cut out by a polynomial F you get U of F now we want to cover it by a bunch of other open sets yeah so obviously all these open sets will have those two red points and there will be a addition points which will be taken out So we are just drawing the covering and uh, we are keeping those two red points constant which I will draw on each of these U of F ones. But the idea is simple that the basically the vanishing set of F that is those two red points missing they lie in the vanishing set of each of those polynomials F1, F2, F3 and so on. So the relationship vanishing set of F equals to vanishing set of F1 intersection vanishing set of F2 intersection vanishing set of F3 and so on should hold. So that is why I will keep those two red points as constant. So we are just forming a cover. Yeah. Now these two points are missing in all of these sets. Now this is important. These two points are missing in all of these sets.
yeah because if some polynomial does not have these two points missing then it will no longer be in the intersection so I've just formed a cover by these sets u of f1, u of f2, u of f3 and all of these have these two red points missing Now the vanishing set of f is nothing but the vanishing set of the ideal generated by these polynomials f1, f2, f3, f4 and so on. It could be infinitely many polynomials. But since O of V is Noetherian, yeah, we start by the assumption that V is an irreducible set here. So O of V is an integral domain and uh, O of V is Noetherian since we are working as in k closed so O of V is Noetherian so we have a finite set ok so O of V is an integral domain O of V is Noetherian and therefore we have a finite set So now fix a sec section in some set u of fi and basically we will glue the sections on u of f1, on f2, on f3 and f4 and glue all of them together to get a section s. So but first let us let us start with the section on u of fi. Now obviously if it is on u of fi just by the definition you have to have o of v and then denominator has to be of the form of fi. Yeah, so you choose section SI as AI by FI superscript N. Yeah, so you choose this N as common in all the sets U of FI. Yeah, so you can choose this common n because uh, there are just a finite number of open sets uh, finite set because the ideal is generated by a finite number of elements and those finite number of elements are precisely the ones which form the cover so basically you can choose a common n for all of them now we want to glue these sections on the intersection Yeah, so you just have f1, f2, f3, f4 all the way to fr. These are the only open sets you have to worry about and you take sections si where it is ai over fi uh, superscript n. So this n is a constant throughout all these sets. Yeah, you could just choose sections like this. You basically want to glue them. So if you want to glue them, they have to be equal on the intersection. Yeah, or this relationship should hold on the intersection. Now see F vanishes on this uh, vanishing set of all these all these uh, polynomials f1 to fr yeah as you can see those two red dots they are present in all the ufis so f vanishes on the vanishing set or f is contained in the radical of the ideal generated by these polynomials by null cell and sarts but we also know that uh, this is an integral domain yeah we are doing gluing for v as irreducible not the general case but v as irreducible so now we can talk about uh, we can just replace vanishing set of f1 to fr with 
f1 to fr raised to the power of n yeah fi is not nil potent so the vanishing sets are precisely the same so now we use null cell in sarts so f belongs to the radical of the ideal generated by f1 superscript n f2 superscript n all the way to fr superscript n or in other words we can write it as this form fm is equal to this summation yeah where each of these bjs is part of o of v yeah so you're basically saying f belongs to the radical i where i is this ideal given by f1 superscript n all the way to fr superscript n now what do we want to do we want to find a section on u of f which you restrict to each of these open sets u of f i it gives you s of i yeah so this is what we are looking for the section s Yes, yeah, so the section has to be of the form of a by f m. Yeah, that is the way the functions look on O of u of f. And when you restrict it to u of f i, it should look like s of i. Now let us write this down again. What we are looking for is this equality. Yeah, when you restrict it to a set u of f i, you should have this equality. Yeah. Or we are looking for this equality. Yeah, it should be f raised to the power of m, not f m. But anyway, f raised to the power of m, you can just replace it by the expression we have just written: j equals to one to r p j f j n. Okay, now we will bring a i inside. Okay, now a i f j n here you can see is equal to a j f i. So I'm going to replace this by a j f i. Yeah, now we have f i n inside. You take f i n outside. You have the summation sign. So we basically want the equality to hold, yeah. And this equality will hold. Now we have f i n on both sides. If you just set this internal, yeah, this set this portion, this underlined portion as a, and you have the equality, and thus you have the section which you restrict to each open set. It will be of the form s i. So that is pretty much it.